John McIntyre was born in 1890 in Davenport, Iowa. John's father was a Methodist minister. When John was one and a half years old, his father died of pneumonia at the age of 44. The premature death of John's father left his family poor. John's mother became a house mother at the girls' dormitory at Cornell College in Iowa. John joked that he was the only boy who grew up in a ladies' dormitory. He witnessed a doctor set another boy's broken arm and ease his pain. It was then that John decided he wanted to become a doctor. He went to Harvard Medical School, graduating in 1916, and when the war broke out, he became a U.S. Army Medical Corps first lieutenant. He arrived in France in September of 1918, but was quickly moved by rail over a four-day time frame to the Swiss border in northeastern France. The first casualties occurred during a German night raid on October 12th through 13th. Seven Americans were killed, 18 were wounded. He worked eight hours on and eight hours off. Dr. McIntyre was appalled at the carnage of war and the waste of human life, later writing of cords of dead bodies. He told of the hardship and pain suffered by the soldiers and of cold and wet weather. Some of the worst memories were of mustard gas, which caused raw, open wounds. The soldiers begged for pain relief, some for a lethal dose of morphine. Dr. McIntyre worked behind the front line but was exposed to shells lobbed at longer range behind the trenches. He later told his son, One time in battle a voice spoke to me telling me to move my head. He did, and a piece of shrapnel from a bomb flew by just where his head had been. The difference between life and death. On November 11, 1918, the war ended, but John remained in France. A captain, later a major in the reserves, he can be seen in this group photo in Toulouse, France, where he studied at the University of Toulouse until he was discharged in August of 1919. He received his certificate of discharge, which showed his military record. He became an Owatonna physician and surgeon for 50 years and died in 1974. This has been a presentation of the Steele County Historical Society, where our mission is preserving and sharing history today for tomorrow.